Right, you've seen the thumbnail, you know what you're in here for. Let's get to it and compare the Dyn Audio Focus 10 to the Special 40 and the Hegel H95. Now, the logical speaker to compare would be the Evoke 10, okay? Same sort of driver count, same tweeter, same bass unit, slightly, slightly different for the active speaker. That is, uh, as you stack them both together, that would be the one that you would consider. Now, I've been listening to the Focus 10 for weeks, and it's very obvious that it's a better speaker than that. For me to compare the Evoque 10 and the Hegel H95 to the Focus 10 wouldn't be a fair comparison. So, wheeled out the old favourites and special 40s, put them with the H95 and pit them against the Focus 10. 4399 for the Focus 10, so 44 basically, and 45 for the 95 and the Special 40. Okay, at the moment there's three stands with the Special 40, so anyone buying a set of Special 40s, you'll get a set of Stand 20s included, which are like a 500 pound stand. It finishes on the 30th of December, so it ends in 23. Either way, you would need stands with the Focus 10, or you need them with a Special 40, or if you're gonna put the Focus 10 on their own stands, on an AV rack, like I use them at home, then you would do the same with the Special 40. So let's assume there's no extra cost involved in how we're gonna place the speaker. The only extra cost involved I can see would be the speaker cable, because we're connecting a network cable regardless, We've got two power cables for the Focus 10 and uh, we've got a single power cable for the H95. So if you want to run a big expensive cable, yeah, there's going to be a difference there in terms of cost. Or you can use a basic cable. I'm using a Cord Epic here, which is a slightly high-end cable, but I haven't really got any no-cost speaker cable kicking around. So uh, yeah, the in terms of money, we're relatively level pegging. So on the pocket, we're being fair with the comparison. I'm not necessarily gonna compare these two tech-wise, although they do stack up quite similarly. The ins and outs of the H95 are good for its level of integrated amplifier, and the ins and outs, that includes the sort of streaming light that the um, Hegel H95 does, which we'll discuss later on, and the ins and outs of the Focus 10 are cutting edge. As you would expect, it's a 2022 product. Um, and it's streaming smart, so a tip top. So I've got my trusty book, which I've got plenty of writing. I've got about three pages to be fair. So it might be a little bit of a long one. I'm gonna drop a little pause, make a cup of tea. Um, what I have done with this one is I have recorded sound. There's a link in the description. I'm gonna put it on a separate video because these videos get nailed with, uh, with copyright. Every one of them. What I always get a complaint when I don't put music in a video why is there no music? I don't want to look at your face for 30 minutes. You have to understand that I can't just play tracks. I'm not one for playing plinky plonky B-roll music. That's not me. I prefer real music. If YouTube just took our money earned from YouTube and gave it to artists, that would just be brilliant. And then we can use decent music. So I like to use real music, which causes copyright strikes. And that's why there's none within this video, but in that link. I will cut together the, the two systems playing with the same tracks, three tracks in particular. Uh, one is No Woman No Cry, which is live, Bob Marley from London, 1975. The other one is Golden Brown by The Stranglers, very, very well-known track, harpsichord and the bass note. The detail of the bass is just killer. Better on one set than it is on another, but we'll get there. And the other is The Arctic Monkeys, probably my favorite band. I bet that you look good on the dance floor. It's their biggest, most sort of common track, but it's gritty and fast and attacking and great to demonstrate the flaws in some systems. So uh, yeah, they're three, but I've been listening to, to, to hundreds of tracks through them, but they're the three that I decided to record back to back. Uh, and that, like I say, will be in a separate sort of um, video, which will be a privately listed video and you'll only be able to get to it from the link. I've not done that so our guys watching on TV can't watch it. It's just the only realistic way I can figure out how to get that video not cause our channel any grief. And it drops us down the algorithm so you won't get shown what we're putting out, you know? Anyway, <laughs> let me say, yeah. Point one of seven in my conditions list. So uh, yeah, you, you, you're just gonna have to bear with me. Um, so the conditions for this test now, my source was Tidal Connect. Silly of me, 
because I didn't realize that the H95 didn't deal with Tidal Connect, it deals with Spotify Connect, but I only really use Spotify for sourcing music. I find Spotify's engine to just be incredible. It knows me very well, um, or so it makes me feel. Tidal, you have to look a lot harder, but Tidal is what I use for, for listening to most of my music. So I'm using AirPlay to the Hegel, and I'm using Tidal Connect on the Focus 10. Now, you would say, well, okay, that's not fair because you're pulling it down from, from uh, for the Focus 10, but you're sending it to, to the Hegel. Well, it is fair because that's the condition. <laughs> it is fair. I would say it is fair because that's the condition that the H95 gives us. Because the Focus 10 can outperform that, then it has an upper hand in the game, surely. So, um, yeah, Tidal is the source. Airplay to the H95, connect with the Focus 10. Both of which work in a very similar way because you still use Tidal's app. So there's no difference in the way that you use it. You can control volume via AirPlay when your phone is locked. You can control volume via Connect when you're inside the Tidal app. So depending on how you see that, I wander around this place all day every day and I use my phone for volume. I don't want to open it every time. But if I'm having a session, then I don't mind doing that. Same power cable, so I'm using Mayan's uh, 100 pound power cable for, I've got one in each of the Focus 10s, I've got one in the Hegel. No room correction on the Focus 10, not because I didn't want to use it, just because I don't have a Dirac account, I haven't figured out that entirely and I wouldn't want to mess it up. I'm using them purely as they sound as speakers at the moment, so I'm not going to give them that sort of upper hand for room correction. But that does mean at the end of the video, the Focus 10 still has a card to play. All right, so those that need to use room correction, um, you won't get that with the H95 and the Special 40. You'll only get that with the Focus 10. So if you've got a lively room or some sort of mode, other than using the bungs on the Special 40, you are fixed with what it sounds like the Focus 10 you can kind of control that. I'm using the Solid Steel SS6. All right? I'm not using the Dyn Audio Stand 20, which I should be using because they're all new and they're in stock. I don't want to open a box. The only other Stand 20 we have out are bolted to Heritage Specials, of which we have a few in stock. So I'm not going to unbox, well, there's no need for me to unbox any Heritage Specials, but I'm not going to unbox the Stand 20s because they go out with our Special 40s and our Heritage Special speakers at the moment. Both systems, as I've said earlier, are hardwired Ethernet. I'm not using the Wi-Fi on the Focus 10 and the Hegel doesn't have Wi-Fi. So you have to have that connected to a router. That's something to consider. That is a placement thing. So you can, you have to have the H95 near your router or near a Cat5 junction, which, um, you know, to have it connected to the network. The focus can sit around wherever you would like. Now, I, I will say this, every dropout I've had from the Focus 10, so let's say I've, I've had them around a month, I've had a couple of dropouts, but every single one of them has been via Wi-Fi. Since I've had them hardwired, I've not had a single dropout. Now, that isn't really on the speakers, that's on your Wi-Fi stability. You know, my Wi-Fi at home and at work is, is both the same. I use Vodafone's advanced box. I find it's just the best one to use. The range is incredible. The dropouts are just, you, know, you don't notice them. But with a speaker like this, when it loses connection, you lose connection on everything and then it resets itself. So it, it needs to wait for that cycle to happen before it comes back online. That can cause downtime when you're listening, of course. But with it connected to Ethernet, I've not seen any drops whatsoever. So I would suggest that the Focus 10 is always hardwired. Um, like I say, with the H95, there's no option. It is on Wi-Fi. I have my own uh, thrown together, it's called, on Tidal. I'll put a link to that below. Hopefully that works. Last time it didn't work. Tidal seem very, uh, very locked down in terms of sharing playlists. They're not like Spotify. You can't just link a playlist. Um, or maybe you can, but the last time the guys had to take the name and our business name thrown together, Studio Incar, search it on Google and it came back with the title link. Whatever, I'll try and put it down below. Um, and I was also using NME's greatest records of all time. Now, it's not for everyone, but it's a very popular playlist that it has a lot of stuff on it, but they're all things that you know. So they're all things like Lou Reed or Bob Marley or things like that. They're all quite common tracks. So it's quite a good playlist to associate with. It's quite a, uh, quite a jolly playlist. 
but it's not one that's been put together for SQ. So some of them sound really bad, some of them sound really good. It's quite nice, it's quite a good mix of music on that. So if you're not, if you've not seen that before on Tidal, NME's greatest tracks of all time, I think it's called, and it's just, yeah, the majority of it is rock and indie stuff, so right up my street. The Focus 10's pros and cons, I've not written many cons at all, I've written power sockets, all right? You need to understand, and, and this is something that bugs me, people assume that active speakers are wireless speakers. They're not. Wireless speakers outside of battery-powered speakers are a myth. The whole argument that you have fewer cables with wireless speakers is ridiculous. You have one set of cables with a passive speaker, it's just speaker cables. You have multiple sets of cables if you want to run fibre into a, an active speaker. Um, uh, f for instance, right now, I have one set of speak one set of cables attached to passive speakers, and I have two sets of cables on one of the active speakers, which is a network cable and a power cable, which is much thicker. Um, and I have a power cable on the other active speaker, and then they're speaking to each other wirelessly. Right? If you want any source at all, other than what the Focus 10 does, you have to plug it into the back of the speaker, so you have more stuff connected to your speaker. So. Wireless speakers, like I say, outside of battery powered speakers like the Dynaudio Music 3 or any sort of Bluetooth streamy battery powered speakers you have, are not truly wireless, all right? Battery powered speakers are wireless, okay? Active speakers, they certainly are. Going back to my point in the cons list, you have to have them near a terminal, you have to have them near a power socket. Now, usually, if you're running the minimalist sort of scenario that I think that this sort of speaker will appeal to. You're not gonna have plug sockets just scattered about the place. You're gonna, you're just not gonna have them. So you're going to want to order uh, longer kettle leads or something like that to get the power cables to where you want them because what we don't want is a junction box behind each stand, behind each speaker. Then we're creating far more mess and the whole idea of it being a cleaner, more minimalist scenario is just, out the window you know that's my only real con with the speaker there's there's no there's nothing else that i can that, that i can pull out that is a bad thing sort of out of the box pros compact classy looks and the finish the finish is textbook dyn audio it's flawless all right it's gloss black it's as flat as glass and that's it uh the focus 10 is a compact active speaker so you could put it on a bookshelf if you're so inclined it's a sealed box, so you can put it pretty much anywhere you like, all right? It's not like the Special 40, which you have to take care of keeping away from walls or keeping out of corners um, or port tuning the speaker. It's a sealed box, so as long as you've got 180 degrees clear on the face, you can pretty much do what you like with it. There are settings as well inside the app so that you can control where the speaker is, whether it's in a corner, against a wall, or in a neutral position, which is just out in the you know out in the room. I run them in a neutral position. They sound best to me in that way. I also, for this test, I've got the EQ balance, or the, sorry, the frequency balance setting on dark, all right? Neutral, it sounds perfectly fine. Um, bright, again, it sounds fine. These are subtle differences but they're just a little bit too lively for me on bright and the uh, neutral position was a little bit lively for the room. So I've put it in dark, which kind of attenuates the high frequency. I didn't notice any difference in terms of bass, weight or quality it, with any of those settings. It all seemed to happen in the mid range to higher frequencies for those three settings. So staying on the Focus 10 Pros list, uh, sealed cabinet flexibility, and I've put big deal in capital letters. That is a really big deal. Kind of means you can launch them wherever you like. You're not limited to the confines of a standard passive speaker with a rear reflex ports or front reflex ports or anything like that. Boxless solution. So you don't need anything. If you want to, you can add multiple things to them but you don't need to do any of that. You can just plug them in, get them wired to ethernet or wireless if you if, if you so wish, you know, Wi-Fi, and you can be playing music within a few minutes, all right? It may want to do a firmware update out of the box because they are updated over the air. If they do want to do that, you're probably 10 minutes away from playing a track. As long as you've got power socket, you can be up and running wherever you like, kitchens, bedrooms, living rooms, wherever you want. Adjustability and app control massive convenience you know 
points on the trump cards for these speakers all right you can just be about the house or in the same room sat on the couch you know as i am and you can just control everything they do from dyn audio's app all right it's not the the music app that was around for the music speakers it's the straight up standard dyn audio app and that's where we get control of the focus speaker choose it you know pick the speaker choose what color they are change their name do all sorts of stuff all sorts of sound settings and everything another big one is direct room correction where you know you can mic the speakers up it will listen to that and it will correct the room so not necessarily the speaker but it will make the speaker counteract things that the room is doing to liven up the sound or to make it boomy and things like that and it will it'll anti those issues um, you don't get that with uh, with a passive scenario. You have to use different room acoustic treatments and different locations and that for the speaker. So that is a huge plus for the Focus 10 and one that I haven't utilised throughout this test. So you may find that in the correct room at the right time, these two systems together, the Focus 10 would outperform it because it will actively correct your room rather than the passive setup. So that's something to bear in mind if your room sounds rubbish. Right. or if your room has particular mode problems. You know, we know the pros and cons of conventional hi-fi. One of the cons would be a higher box count. So we either need a dedicated rack, which we're seeing less and less of nowadays, um, or we need to mount that inside our AV racks or inside whatever we've got below our tellies or next to our couches. So there is a, there is a box count to consider. If you want other things other than the streamer, bearing in mind this is the same as the Focus 10 as well, um, you will have to add boxes. But of course, you know, that's the same for both systems, which then makes the Focus 10 a multi-box solution as well as, you know, the standard Hi-Fi. So, you know, anything you want to add is going to turn the Focus 10 back into what people who buy them are trying for them not to be. Does that make sense? They're no longer a one box clean solution, you know? So uh, yeah, that goes for, you know, that goes for both systems. Pros for your conventional hi-fi. So uh, in this scenario, a slightly larger speaker, bass reflex tuning. So, you know, you're gonna have, well, I suppose you'll see throughout the test, but you're, you're probably gonna have larger bass output. The placement remains the same. Of course, we can move the speakers wherever we like. You can for the tinkerers, and I'm quite a tinkerer to be fair, you can chop and change your kit, so you can change your integrated amplifier. You're not stuck with the amplifiers that are inside the units, so you can change them. You can change your speaker cables if you so wish. I don't often feel the need to at all. Um, but you can do that, so it keeps the tinkerer happy and the classic hi-fi guy happy. Uh, the pride of ownership of, say, an integrated amp or a rack system, I get that, you know, I'm, I'm the same. Another thing you need to bear in mind as well is we're using uh, a Hegel H95. This is a new age of integrated amplifier. You know, I genuinely believe that all integrated amplifiers need some sort of streamer, some sort of streaming or network input. They also will need HDMI, but we don't get that from hardly any of them, unfortunately. I believe there's a point where, other than super high-end integrated, uh, where we can use high-end dedicated streamers, there is a market for that. You know, we're a part of that market with our sort of higher-end streamers. I, I believe that there is still uh, a case for that, but most amplifiers, I think, should have some sort of streamer light. Now, my you know my streamer light terminology is you know a streamer that passes for convenience and sounds good you know it sounds it sounds fine something that my wife and kids or myself can walk into the house swipe down press play and off we go all right so there is an element of convenience to this that i believe that units should have and all of the hegel amplifiers are like that they don't have super streamers inbuilt they have streamers that are, um, you know, airplay streamers that are inbuilt into the amplifier. We're talking 1644.1, so we're not talking low resolution. It's just standard CD, your red book stuff, which sounds good, you know. But they are streamer light, L-Y-T-E, for me. And then you get into full fat streamers like our Aralic streamers, our Rose streamers, things like that. Yeah, so we're dealing with an amplifier that is closer matched with 
say an active streaming set of speakers than your conventional integrated amplifier and multi-stack system. So sound, what I'm going to do is I'm going to discuss the Focus 10, how it sounds, and then I'm going to discuss the H95 and the Special 40 comparatively. Okay, you know I've reviewed the Special 40, there's a H95 review coming, that's why it's on the rack. Yeah, so each thing that I say uh, about the Special 40 will be what it does differently, or what that system does differently to the Focus 10, and then I'll discuss which one I would take home. So um, yeah, the Focus 10, right, so... I was super impressed with the driver integration on the Focus 10 and again it has as a Dyn Audio speaker that typical transparent mid-range, that eerie realism to the mid-range. Now what that says to me is that their measurement facility, or the Jupiter measurement facility that they use is sending back some really accurate stuff to them which allows them to voice the speaker very similar to their passive lines because I put that um, super fluid mid-range of Dyn Audio speakers almost exclusively down to their passive crossovers that are in the box. Now, I haven't got that excuse with the Focus 10 because they don't have passive crossovers. They have fully active crossovers that are managed by DSP. Someone's had to input that data from analysis and from listening tests and it's really correct. It really sounds on brand for Dyn Audio. Like it, 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 it's not like this all of a sudden sounds like a PMC speaker or or a Bauer speaker or, so, or it's more like something else. It sounds like a Dyn Audio speaker. It has that richness. It has that sort of, like I say, that, that most black hole sort of mid-range about it. Yeah, so I expected less from it and, uh, and I got, you know, much more. I just assumed that because of the DSP control, someone or something would have to have input over that and therefore it would it would take away from that sort of Dyne Audio richness and it just doesn't. Um, another thing, because of its driver size, of course, you know, it's not huge scale sound. You'll have to step up in through the floor standards for that. But uh, what it does have is really decent textural layering in the bass. So the bass that is there, it gives this, um, this emphasis of really full bodied, weighty bass you know you can hear it you can feel it you know it's uh, very surprising for a small speaker mid bass wise they're nice and strong it doesn't really want for anything there they're slightly lighter than other speakers within the range um, but if you want that sort of full on mid bass slam I think you'd have to up the driver count you know or the driver size at least high frequencies you know your, your, your tweet is there it's a Serotar tweeter it sounds nice you know but it's, it does sound different to the Serotar tweeter from the Evoke line. It's slightly more controlled. It has a little bit more restraint to it, which is a nice thing, you know. The Serotar tweeter in the Evoke line can be peppy and quite lively, um, and it's a very sort of fun-loving speaker, you know. In these, it's a little bit more refined. It's a little bit more gentlemanly, you know. So um, that's why, you know, the, the comparison between these and the Evoke 10, it wasn't really... Um, it wouldn't be realistic, you know, they're, uh, they sound quite nice. So again, you know, that, that, that sort of credit to the DSP tuning that's going on in there. And I can only imagine, you know, with, with room correction or um, the possibility for you to switch between different sound settings as well, it'll only get better for each listener as they subjectively listen to the speaker and have their own opinion on, uh, on what their high frequency taste is, you know? So yeah, top to bottom, really nice and it it honestly doesn't matter where you put them i've brought them out into the room on the stands uh, as you'll see uh, i've put them back onto the cabinet as well where the where the amplifier and stuff is and they still sound wicked up there there's no notable shifts in um how much bass weight or how much bloom is in the room 
Whereas if I put the special 40 up there, you know, within 20 centimeters of the rear wall, I would get a, you know, a, a wall of base. I would be surrounded with base and I'd have to pick everything out from within there. And that's the, that's the plus of a, of a sealed enclosure, not necessarily a plus of the Focus 10. It's just a sealed enclosure trait. You can kind of chuck them wherever you want and you're going to get minimal issues, you know? So, uh, yeah. Wicked piece of kit. Now, as I was listening to them, you know, as I have been listening to them, I've been thinking to myself, you know, I don't know if this test's gonna be fair, which is a shout out to those speakers because they, they just sound rad for, 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 for what they are, you know, for the, for the size of them, should I say, and for what I was expecting, maybe, you know. That's why I made the decision to, uh, to up it to the Special 40s. I needed to make it more fair. And I know that the Special 40 and the Hegel pairing is slightly more money but it needed to be because the Focus 10 is just that good, really. It really doesn't sound like any other active streaming speaker I've, I've heard, you know. So in comparison, the, um, just read my notes, the uh, Special 40 and the Hegel H95 mix. Of course, I've listened to all sorts of music, but the three recordings that I've made I've listened to those three tracks today again, just to refresh myself. And I've tried to focus in on a couple of details. And therein lies the explanation between the two systems. All right, bass texture and detail from the Special 40 and H95 combo is a fair amount higher. All right, the scale of it, the weight of it, the detail within the bass line, especially from um, Golden Brown by The Stranglers, that bass line has loads of juice. There's loads of things you can focus in on from the vibrations of it to the tone of it, um, you know, the scale of it. It's just more, it's just more, it's just more of everything. There's more weight there, there's more detail there you can focus in on it more. In fact, it's easier to focus in on because it, it's just it's just very obviously coming out of the speakers or they're digging deeper to get that detail out. All right, so that is there. And also the ride that's in, the, the, the ride symbol from Golden Brown as well, just has a little bit more intricacy to it. It just lasts for a little bit longer in the air, which means that you know, the Isatar tweeter in the Special 40 is just doing a better job of that sort of resolution. And the amplifier, you know, the Hegel amp is, is of course delivering that to the speaker. And the ambient sound within Bob Marley's No Woman No Cry, um, it's a live recording that we listen to and you'll likely hear the same, albeit I've recorded it on a Sony mic. Um, it's recorded quite well, but of course it depends on how you're listening to it. But it should be obvious to you, the, the room sound from that track, the crowd, the feedback from the crowd, you know, the, the vocal from the crowd, you know, everyone's singing along with the song. You should be able to pick that up. It should be just immediately more obvious. And that's what I've experienced in the room. The recordings should make an honest man of me, but, you know, listen to them as you wish. There's just more depth to the resolution on tap from the Special 40 and H95 combo. That's just, that's just a fact. You know, I'm using AirPlay to stream to the Hegel. I'm not using Tidal Connect. So whether the tracks are the same in terms of bit depth from um, and resolution from Tidal, you know, there may be a master file in there or whatever, but that should bode in the Focus 10's favor, not in the um, Special 40 favor, because I'm only using AirPlay to the Hegel. So yeah, we've, we've got more base weight, more base detail, and more sort of mid-range and high frequency resolution from the Special 40. That is what I expected, if I'm being honest. That, that is, you know, that is what I expected. They, they are an outstanding speaker. And, you know, there's also the question of scale. The Special 40 delivers scale without compromise. Like, it, it's a notoriously large sounding small speaker, all right? So it delivers, you know, almost full bass weight. You know, the bass weight is incredible. Uh, and, and I've not heard a similar stand mount, a similar sized unit create such scale, you know. 
So that that kind of is in there as a more of a sort of personal review of the special forty, but it is comparable. You know that sort of scale is non tap from the Focus Ten, and I would say rightfully so. It's a smaller speaker. It's a smaller sealed speaker. It's not using the room. It's using itself. It's got a driver that is technically half the size. It uses a five and a quarter inch driver. A six and a half inch driver is nearly double the um, the, the the sort of piston area. So you know it, it's bound to lose out on that. Um, yeah, they're my findings between the two. Now, I have um, I have my comparison explanation. It's not weird, but hopefully you'll understand it. You know, I I believe that you know the 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 pair of these systems together or listen to you know on their own um are super fun to listen to they're super engaging to listen to like you wouldn't be unhappy with either both of them sound fantastic they're both extremely similar sounding there's just there's just more output from the special 40. now bearing in mind we haven't used any room correction any uh, dirac gubbins um so like i say it still has a, a trump card to play um but I have sectioned both of them out to to different types of owners, all right? It's not a cop-out. I'll give you my, my opinion of which one I would have in a minute. But I believe that your guy with the Special 40 and the H95 is a slightly different guy to your Focus 10 guy. Your H95 or any Hague or H amp or any Special Integrated amp and your Special 40 guy is a session listener. He will go to his system and he will have his location and he will listen to his stereo. That's, I'm a weird one because I'm both, I will session listen. I tend to session listen here, but I am the other guy at home, all right? So, yeah, I believe the H95 and the Special 40 speaker set is more for your session listener. He gets involved in his music and he sits there for a while and he listens to his system. That's what that system is there for. Your Focus 10 guy is your serious casual listener, all right? I have to put serious in there because casual listener is slightly insulting, all right? Because it's slightly insulting to the speaker. These don't deserve a casual listener. They deserve a serious listener, all right? Most active speakers can be casual listening speakers. You know, you just press play, off you go. You, you, you've got music on in the background. We all know you're casual guy. It's not your type of guy that watches this video and it certainly isn't me, but your serious casual listener demands the quality of a hi-fi, but wants the system to fit around his or her lifestyle, not for him or her to fit around the system, you know? So we want high level Sonics, but we want the convenience of them being placed wherever we like them. We want the minimalist approach of not having any other boxes or any rack or even an AV rack. We just want our speakers to do what we want, you know. Those types of guy have, you know, maybe high-end ceiling systems or high-end sound bar systems or high-end active streaming loudspeakers. They want the convenience to be able to play it from there, but they want the sound to be tip-top, all right. And they're the two different people. I, I believe that as streaming loudspeakers get better, as the Focus 10 have proven and the rest of the Fo Dyn Audio Focus line, uh, have proven they will become much much more popular within the fold of the person that likes hi-fi and likes that high-end sound from a specific hi-fi because up until now really speakers like this haven't been taken seriously because they've sounded lackluster good for your casual guy you know i suppose but not good for your serious guy so yeah h95 and special four is your session listener it's never going to let you down all right, the Focus 10 is your serious casual listener. That's who I am at home. I never sit in front of my system at home and de have a dedicated listening session. In here, when I'm left on my own, I really do. I pull different things out and different speakers out, amp streamers, whatever, and I love comparing them and I'll have a session. That's when I want a full rack of kit and I can chop and change and I can fiddle around to my heart's content. But the Focus 10, sat at home on my, I've got a BDI, like AV rack at home. The table is empty, you know, it's just got the speakers on it, which I can show you now. And I can also show you how it currently looks at the moment because it has a full system on it. And you'll get the gist of 
what I'm talking about in terms of the, the sort of clean line. Which would I take home should be answered within what I've just said. The Focus 10 suits my lifestyle better at home. And maybe even the Focus 30 because I can get a load more base weight and I have got room to have them just standing either side of my rack. But I get all of that convenience of not having any other boxes and I can just press play. Which would I have if it was the end of the world and it was between <laughs> the end of the world? It's drastic, isn't it? Um, and it was between the Focus 10, the H95 and the Special 40. It would be the H95 and the Special 40. It sounds better. It's less convenient. It costs slightly more money, but it sounds better. Yeah. Either way, they're both wicked, so you're not going to lose. <laughs> um, all of which are in stock. So don't forget, I do go to the effort of doing these things, but we're also a shop. We need to sell product to keep us here. So, uh, yeah, we have the Focus Line. I'll back the Focus Line. I've had it now for a little while. I've listened to it. It's a good, solid product. The app doesn't drop out. There's no issues with it, so I'm fully behind it, which means I'm behind it for you. The H95, you know, we've had them since the beginning really from a solid line of amplifiers i'll do a review on that independently that has like i say has been on the rack for a little while now the special 40 you've had more than enough from me about they're a they're just a magnificent speaker but yeah you know they they they, they say well we have them here they're in stock and you can have them from us anything within the video is linked below i'll do my best to make your transition from this video to listening to the recording that I made and the video that I will have edited specifically so you can see which speaker was playing, you can hear which speaker was playing. I'll try and make that as seamless as I possibly can. For the channel, of course, likes, subscribes, get your mates involved, whatever, share it about. It, it's all beneficial. It all helps the algorithm of YouTube feed our videos to more people that we can hopefully generate relationships with and can come here and listen to our stuff and hopefully buy our stuff. So yeah, everything's down below that you need to see. I'm Carl, it's a Saturday afternoon, so I think I'm gonna go and take the kids swimming. You take it easy, all right? Let's just let this helicopter go.